Hi, on MPI, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thanks, DigiKey. This week, it is from eSwitch. Lady Ada, what is the new product introduction of the week this week? Okay, this week, it's the super fun fidget toys. Now, they're uh, e-stop switches. E-switch also makes e-stop switches. Uh, these are safety switches for your equipment. Uh, they come in two flavors. There's this kind of mushroom e one, and then there's this one that you can put an LED in. It comes with an LED, but you can you know, get a custom LED. Um, both are really excellent safety switches that you can uh, mount. They're not too big, so they're good for you know, smaller equipment, but they're nice and red and bright, so you know uh, where it is. You'll see it, and you'll be able to turn it off. So what is a e-stop or kill switch? Um, so you'll see this in a lot of equipment. All the equipment that we have at Adafruit has one of these, which is, I think, great. Um, and it's basically your last you know, gas safety measure. It basically goes in right between the in input power and the uh, machine. And so when the button is pressed or, or smashed or slapped, it's like it will immediately shut off all power to the machine no matter what. There is no like send an interrupt to a microcontroller that might like carefully shut it down. No, this is like you're immediately pulling the cord, but sometimes the cord is behind the machine or it's hardwired, you can't pull the cord. So this is the kill switch. Yeah, so there's legislation to get these installed on every phone that has TikTok. Um, so I found this, like I remembered this, you know, uh, when we build, you know, engineers, if we're building devices and sometimes they're tiny little like cute Tamagotchi things, but sometimes um, they're, they're devices that are like really big, really fast, and uh, they can really hurt someone. And, you know, in school, like you often learn history of how to safely design things and one of the i remember one of the lessons of the Thera 25 is they didn't they had a disabled interlock um there was no last gasp like you know uh fix for if there was too much radiation emitted from this machine um and only a few days ago i was talking to somebody who, who did safety engineering um and inspection we were talking about this book the design of everyday things because a big part of this book is about how a lot of tragedies with safety engineering and, and user experience are because we have to design things for when people are using them and there's panic or confusion or they're hurt and they don't necessarily have like all of their faculties. You're not going to sit down and reason through like, oh, I have to enter a pin code into the machine to shut it down. You know, they're going to be acting um, kind of in desperation. And so how do you design something that is um so safe that like you know you minimize the amount of mistakes that can be made so let's go to the overhead and i'll show one of the cool things about kill switches um and e-stops is um it's a little easier to show this one so you know we have switches that are like you know momentary or um okay we have switches that are like momentary um like you know this actually this button here which happens to be a multimeter, you know, you press it um, and you can, uh, you know, select different modes. And each time you press it, the mode changes. But you don't want that for your on off switch. And you don't want a switch that um, is a toggle either, because you may not be able to read the little print that says on or off. You're like, is it on or off? And you might accidentally keep flipping it back and forth, which is, you, know, you might not be able to turn it off. So what's cool about this is that this switch has one way to turn it off, and that's you press it. And when you press it, it latches closed and all the contacts open and then you can't push it again and you can't pull it either in order to re-enable the machine you have to twist it so it's push to open twist to close and the same thing with this it's you know and there's a nice satisfying click um which is good that's another thing it's not a soft and they purposefully say like it's not hard to press but it's like it's it's you hear it and you feel it, so you know that you did something, um, and then you have to flick it, switch it, uh, rotate it to to reopen. And then there's an you know there's an illuminator in this one, um, so that you know reduces the the risk of like oh there's a button and you press it and you're like did I really turn it off because maybe the machine still has some momentum and you press it again and then you just turned it back on. Um, so you know this kind of design where 
the the immediate thing is to turn it off and then if you want to turn it back on you actually have to do a little bit of thinking you're like oh wait i have to twist it in this direction but the instructions say push so you you know that's the the action you have to do so this comes in two variations um but both are actually basically the same body it's just the um knob is different you just drill a hole um uh to uh to mount it and it'll pull a notch so it doesn't twist although if it's twisted it's fine it'll still work and then um digikey carries two options without illumination and with and the illuminated one only comes with the red 24 volt led but if you look there are other options so if you want a custom version like you want neon because you want that like literally in line with the ac power six volt 12 volt you know you probably want to have the led in line with whatever your your power is um so that it really indicates whether the machine has not like it's functional but whether there's power coming into the machine also handy if you have like a ground fault or or like you know something is shorted inside so you only want to put this at the very entrance of power the inlet you'll also need uh spade connectors another nice safety thing if you just go quickly to the overhead i forgot to call this out um so all the spade connectors you'll notice on our like low cost switches these are all exposed but here they're completely um covered there's like no there's no way for these to actually get bent and touch or if you have the spade contacts inside um they won't be able to touch um each other and accidentally short um, that said, you want to have the spade connectors here. This is just a, a, a demo, but have the ones that are, of course, you crimp them on, but that have a full plastic cover. Uh, so again, minimize any risk of shorting between the contacts that would, of course, negate the benefit of having an e-stop switch. And it's available on DigiKey, of yes. course, as Lydia just said. In, um, stock. in stock and all that. Okay. Yeah. Um, some folks have some very funny, clever things. They, they're pointing out that some of the absurd things that, like, everything needs an app. This isn't one of those things. Yeah, there's no AI with this. This is to yeah. save folks. And then someone said, have you seen the blade stop technology? That's another safety thing there. They yeah. do the hot dog test where, yeah. where it stops the blade right before it nicks the person. But yeah. This is really cool stuff, and I see these every day at Adafruit because we like being safe. And it's one of those things when you see equipment, it's like, okay, I know, yeah. I, I know, I have control. Um, when we were talking about um, IoT devices and IoT bill of rights, my joke was like, it should have something like this in there. Yeah, I mean, so turn I, off the microphone and the the uh, the camera. I, I remember distinctly, you know, when I was was I was, took a class at the Media Lab, and I had like John Mida, who is this like well known designer. And you always, you know, and you, he was like, "What are you designing?" He's kind of like this guy who like shows up and like says one thing and then walks away. Like he's kind of like he's kind of like the <laughs> some kind of aloof cat. Uh, so he came in. And he, he came into my office. And he looked at this board I was designing, and he was like, "You know, every piece of hardware should have an off mechanic off switch." Because so I was like, "Oh, he's like, how do you turn it off?" I was like, "Well, you just unplug it." Because it's like a you know pre Arduino type thing. Yeah. They have a mechanical off switch. So I tried actually, you know, a lot of my Metro designs. I have an off switch. To... It's interesting. The new AirPods, the case, there's no physical button to pair them. You have to know where to touch it on the outside for capacitive touch. Very interesting. No, 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 would not be into that. Yeah. Um, all right. So we have a little video and then we'll bounce back and show you what's new and new products this week. Hi, my name's Adam. I'm an engineer here at eSwitch, and today I'm proud to introduce our newest series of switches, the E100 and 200 push button emergency stops. The E100 and 200 are easy to operate push button switches with high actuation force and a rotating push lock design for safe and deliberate use. The E100 and 200 have either a tall red illuminated actuator or a short red non-illuminated actuator. We have 16 different illumination options, including LEDs, incandescence, neon, or with no lamp. The E100 and 200 are available in a wide variety of configurations between normally open and normally closed. The E100 and 200 have an operating temp of negative 25 Celsius to 55 Celsius with the lamp or negative 25 to 70 Celsius without the lamp. All of our E100 and 200 emergency stops are available with IP65 in a 16 millimeter cutout size. The E100 has UL, TUV, and ENIC agency approvals, whereas the E200 has UL and currently has the VDE approval pending. These switches are available for commercial appliances, security devices, industrial controls, and kiosks. You can head to eSwitch.com for the E100 and 200 data sheets, agency approvals, and our full product catalog. 
Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow for more information and news from eSwitch. Hi, I'm MPI.